Naisha McCauley, and you're watching AccessTV.org. Oh my goodness. And you know, it's allergy season is here. I'm telling you. Boy, it's not a good thing when you find out uh, you got allergies, you got the asthma going on and everything else like that. So I tell you, uh, summer is coming up soon. And you have to realize um, that we are in spring, going into summer pretty soon. And um, this weather has certainly been interesting. Anyway, i like to welcome you to make it happen and um, actually I have a wonderful guest today. And I'm so excited to have her here. I met her at Passages Gallery. And um, actually what I wanna do is really introduce her to you right now. She's a singer for social change. And uh, we'll tell you more about what's happening tonight later on in the show. So I just wanna welcome you, Jill. This is Jill Friedman. Thank you. You're welcome. Happy to be here, Pamela. Okay. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. And I noticed that you started your day out early. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I woke up and yes. I was up and hopping because we have the big show tonight. So, yeah. yeah. And um, actually, um, I know you were singer, artist, and oh, everything. Um, activist. <laughs> uh, um, you work with um, kids, too, special needs kids, right? Yeah. And... Um, how is um, being like an artist? How did you get into um, artistry? Oh boy, I, I think it started when the seed was planted long, long ago, but I didn't really act on my visual art things, projects that I'm doing until I was actually in my 40s. And I'm in my late 50s now, I guess we're not supposed to say that, but I am. And I proudly <laughs> embrace it. Yes. <laughs> and um, it just started out as a hobby gone wild. I had been doing photography before that and was really taken by journalistic photography. And I would do um, go to rallies, peace marches, mm -hmm. um, uh, budget hearings, just about anywhere <laughs> I could go mm -hmm. and take pictures. And I also a lot of times would sing mm -hmm. and be, you know, be asked to perform at these events. Oh my goodness. And um, someone saw my photography and asked me to come in to speak at his art class. It was um, Augustine Co-Francesco, many people know about him, mm -hmm. in uh, Farmington. And so I went in and um, he was talking to me about uh, some controversial photos that I had taken that had been censored out of a gallery at the um, City of Hartford Office of Cultural Affairs. Oh, really? Yes, it was very interesting. Um, I had taken photos of an early anti-war rally that was in Washington, DC. Mm -hmm. It was just before the Iraq war broke out and it was an anti-war rally but they also had issues around Palestine and Israel and some very heavy duty mm -hmm. things. And so I took photos and I made it into a photographic essay mm -hmm. and I showed Yvonne Harris from the Office of Cultural Affairs back, back then, I think it was 2003. Mm -hmm. And um, she loved them and she said, I wanna do, I wanna feature you in an exhibit. <laughs> so we're all excited. We put them up and two photographs, uh, some people in the building complained about Oh, and so I was asked to take them down. And so the Civil Liberties got involved, Civil Liberties Union from Connecticut, oh, Tracy dear. Younger and those folks um, who do wonderful work. And um, they got involved and we ended up agreeing upon putting it in more of an enclosed space because it had been on a wall mm -hmm. um, where everyone walks through. But one of the photos said, war is terrorism, ask the innocent people of and then it had listed all of the places that the U.S. had invaded. Mm, and wow. right or wrong, it was a list. Um, and the stripes on the flag that was being shown um, looked like blood bleeding down, the red stripes. Oh, wow. And the stars were skulls, so it was very heavy hitting. It was a very heavy duty um, picture. And um, there was someone with a poster that said that. And so um, that was one of them that caused some ruckus. <laughs> oh. And then the other one were two women dressed in full burqas. Those are the long black yeah. um, uh, 
um, oh. articles oh. of clothing right. that women wear who um, have um, who are very strict Muslim women who um, you know practice that, and they were holding a sign between them, and it said, "Israel, um, go in peace." And then on the bottom uh, was a Jewish star and an equal sign and a swastika. Yeah. So, and being a Jewish woman, <laughs> you know, I mean, it certainly um, had its impact on me, but it made me think, and it made me think deeper about the issue. And I, so I thought it was important to present that as journalism, photographic journalism. Mm. It was documentation as opposed to endorsement. And it was to make people think. And I guess I did because yes. they made me take it down. <laughs> but um, so then becoming a censored artist became kind of exciting because it did make people think. And um, so I kind of tried to embrace that. And so that was kind of a kickoff for my art. But anyway, going back to when I met Augustine, mm -hmm. he had me come into his class to talk about that. But um, I also showed him a sketchbook that I had with different things inside. And he said, girl, you have to put those on canvas. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I said, I don't know what to do. He goes, go to Jerry's Artoram, a little plug for Jerry's. <laughs> okay. And get a starter kit and just do it. And so I did. And it just kind of started going wild. Mm -hmm. And um, like I said, that was in maybe 20 years ago now. Oh, okay. And um, yeah, it was really exciting. And other people liked it. And I couldn't didn't really do it to make money because I was teaching full time. And mm -hmm. then I started branching into um, looking towards retirement with teaching after a couple of little health issues. I just said, mm, maybe I need to put that aside and reinvent myself. So I decided, what do I really want to do? Mm -hmm. And music and art were just like way out there in front oh, of the pack. Okay. Wow. But I also switched out of special ed into um, after 30 years okay. and became certified in teaching English as a second language. Okay. So I teach in the mornings in adult education down in Middletown okay. with people from all over the world. I just oh, love geez. it. And um, then in the afternoons, I'm over at one of the Hartford Elementary Schools tutoring kids who have English as their second language. Mm -hmm. And I'm loving that, too. So I feel like I've got the best of everything right now. Oh, that's that's fantastic. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Yeah, first time that's happened. <laughs> yeah. So what was it like um, teaching kids a special education teacher? Oh, what was that like, first of all? I loved it. Yeah. I can't tell you how much I loved it. I started my career in um, 1978 um, in Hartford. Mm. And then I took off, went to England, had a baby, blah, blah, blah. Whoa, Life kind of happened. And then in 86, I started at Bloomfield High School, and I was there for 18 years. Oh, wow. In 98, 99 school year, I was teacher of the year for the district. Oh. So that was kind of my prime, you know, okay. my, my best year. And um, I worked with kids who um, had developmental disabilities. Mm -hmm. And some of them you would never know. Um, really? You would you know, walk into a room until you started to have a conversation okay. and realize that maybe they had had some kind of TBI, traumatic brain injury mm -hmm. or something. And um, I got to know their families. I ran workshops for parents. Oh, wow. We were in the homecoming parade. We did unified basketball. Oh, my goodness. We had jobs all over the school. And then with my older students out in the community. And I loved it. Oh. And then it was getting a little bit, you know, they were changing up the programs. Yes. And I was offered a position in Hartford. And I said, oh, I'm going to dive into my hometown. Okay. And so I came back to Hartford and I loved working with the Hartford kids. Okay. I was at Fox Middle till it closed. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. And then, um, let's see, Moylan. Mm -hmm. And then Milner for a hot minute. Okay. And, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then kind of switched yes. things up a little bit. So doing what I'm doing now at the elementary at Naylor School in Hartford. Mm -hmm. So, For the uh, education, how many um, people do you teach and what are the ages actually? Oh, well, my adult students, um, my youngest is 23, my oldest is 71. Oh, they okay. come from, let's see, Morocco, Haiti, wow. um, uh, Dominican Republic, mm -hmm. Mexico, China, South Korea, uh, the Ukraine. Wow. Uh, we have students from all over the world. I think the school in itself uh, represents 25 students, I mean, 25 different countries. And I have eight students in my program right now, which is a really great small number. Okay. Yeah, and I'm great. teaching them all English. And I have the advanced class. It's great. We get into discussions okay. about everything. Wow. Because when it's new, uh, culturally, you're just walking into the American culture. There's so much to learn. Uh -huh. And there are many nuances 
and idioms, you know, it's raining cats and dogs. Oh my God, what does that mean? Oh, <laughs> you know, if yes. someone takes things literally like that, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to, um, you know, have to really think about it and ask questions and they get very shy that they, that they might not phrase it properly because of their English skills. Right. Okay. And then when I work with kids um, at the elementary, I have several kids from fifth, sixth, and eighth grade is what wow. I'm working with now where the need was. And um, those are kids mostly who are new arrivals. And they're from Puerto Rico, Dominican, and um, Thailand. So when they come in, their English is not that well? Uh, yeah, they, some of them have no English. Some have a little so how do you, English. How do you teach, actually? Oh, gosh. They have a um, very tactile, you know, <laughs> like hands-on. This mm -hmm. is the door. This is a door. Repeat after me. This is a door. Oh, oh okay. But I also do it through music. The days of the week, the months of the year. We do, okay. You know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You know? <laughs> and that cute. makes them, well, you know, it's yeah. a way to remember. And when you start remembering... Um, you know, you need to remember something like why do kids not remember a poem that they're learning in a literature class, but they know every word to a long rap song. Right, right. You know? That's true. So priorities, you know. Um, and then we'll do um, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, and August, September, October, November, December. Those are the months of the year. And then they go boom, boom, boom. <laughs> oh. So we have a blast. Very you know, it's, it's yes. a lot of fun. Yeah, they never talk like that for us to, you know, uh, remember things. So yeah. It's just based <laughs> on your memory and keep on writing and get it in your mind. But that is really nice. Something different. Very, nice. very nice. Um, so you're going to continue that too, right? Oh, yeah. You're, okay. I, yes. I love it. Yes. It's always nice to do something that you love. Mm -hmm. And I'm staring at your earrings, you know, to go, to move forward to okay. uh, your art <laughs> and stuff. Did you, where did you find those earrings? Because those are so beautiful. If so I tell you the truth, you're not going to believe me. Okay, I don't know if you can really see them. The audience. <laughs> They're actually little parts of a Mexican flag. I mean, oh, not really? flag, I'm sorry. Um, like a, a blanket. Oh, really? So it's woven somewhere in Central or, or um, in Mexico or Central okay. America. Okay, I know you probably get that. But um, I, I'm really adoring her earrings. It's thank so you. Beautiful. Well, where I got them was at a gas station, <laughs> one of the really? little convenience stores on the little racks that they have. Mm -hmm. I fell in love with them and I bought them. So. Oh, oh my goodness gracious. I get more compliments on these. It's funny. Yes, wow. So um, are any of your siblings still living and do they participate with you sometimes? My you... siblings? Yes. Not really. No. We're very different, cut out of different um, cloth, and I'm the rebel individualistic person. <laughs> oh, okay. And um, they're pretty, you know, settled in their their lovely little lives, and I love them dearly, mm -hmm. you know. And I had a brother that um, was killed in a car accident oh, uh, several years ago, sorry 1992. Jeez, I'm sorry. So, yeah, that. thank yeah. you. Um, I know you traveled, uh, you know, you mentioned the other places. You mm -hmm. traveled through Jamaica, West Africa, mm -hmm. um, Sirocco, did I get that right? Um, Mexico? Um, I've been in Mexico, yeah. <laughs> Curacao, which I loved. It's in the Dutch Antilles off okay. the coast of um, uh, Argentina. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Venezuela. Okay. And it's beautiful. I know it. Oh, gosh. Oh, I know the God. water was I wanna, beautiful. It's, you know, I don't want to go back to too many places because yes. I want to keep adventuring, but that's one place I oh, go okay. back to. Um, what did you do West there? Africa. I was West there. Africa. I believe it or not, I won a free trip. I won a raffle. Oh, it really? Was, remember when they had the um, winter carnivals in yes. Hartford? Okay. They had this big raffle one night with this big New Year's Eve thing, and I won top prize. So I went with a friend. Wow. And it was great. That was years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but I went to West Africa, and I loved it, and I went back a few times. And Oh, wow. Just loved it. Um, what I want to do now is um, get into your art a little bit and um she has a website and uh if you go online you can check out all the beautiful pictures that she has there you know the different it's got very colorful pictures and you based on your artistry you do like bright colors and different other colors yeah and uh she was showing me a couple of her pictures and what we'll do is after the break we will show you a few pictures too but um you, she's going to be doing something in June, Sunday, the 24th, 21st, excuse me. And it's Sowing Seeds of, for Peace. And it's the 12th Annual Children's Peace Festival. And um, it's going to be from 1 to 5. And um, actually, uh, it's going to be at uh, 303 Tunks's Road, West Hartford. Wow, that, 
and um, the ages for the kids is 6 to 12. Uh, could bring their younger sisters and brothers accompanied by a responsible adult. And um, actually, uh, you got to come in and enjoy stories, games, and everything else like the dance, face painting, and more. And uh, actually, the phone number is 860-760-9770. Now, what made you want to do this real quick? Oh, just because they ask me every year, and it's a free festival representing peace, and it's for kids. Mm -hmm. And so I said, oh, sounds like they're speaking my language. Oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. And um, actually, you can um, go on the website. What is your website? It okay. is their website. Yes, is um, C L M O E C K E L, which is the name of someone who is running the program, at gmail dot com. Okay, first name. Wow, that is fantastic! Oh my goodness gracious! Wow, and it's something for the kids to do, which is really really nice. And uh, what we'll do, um, we'll be right back. Okay, we'll make it happen. How do you judge a law firm's success? Cases won, money made, or what the firm does in the community? At Dressler Strickland, we know that success is just the beginning. The true measure of success is what you do with it. For 33 years, we've used our success to help our neighbors and our community. 24 7, 11 22. Whenever you need us, we'll be there. Dressler Strickland, building communities one case at a time. IBCF, a reinvented sports field that provides a more dynamic and accurate way to follow sports events. The IBCF has numerous benefits for sports events. The invention provides a dynamic and accurate way to play and watch sports games. The device emphasizes boundaries and marks, helps track player movements, and allows for easy replays and call determination. The IBCF features a weatherproof sports surface with an underground lighting system and a camera and video playback system. The device has a body contact and footprint activated illumination. The IBCF solves the problem of accurately following sports events to provide a more enjoyable experience. The modified sports field has lighted boundaries and marks and body contact and footprint illumination system. The underground lighting and camera and video playback systems provide fast and easy instant replays and make watching the game more enjoyable. The inventor wanted a way for teams to show their colors and a way to ensure honest calls during gameplay, so he decided that a new kind of sports field was needed. Welcome back. I'm here with Jill Friedman. Oh my goodness. Singer for Social Change. And we were talking about photography. Um, what she teaches, she was teaching special ed down to teaching adult education, teaching people how to speak English, which um, everybody should learn the correct way of speaking English or the correct English language, you know, especially, um, let me ask you that. I want to welcome you back, Jill. Thank you. Um, about the writing, um, you teach writing too also, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And English was one of my best subjects when I was younger <laughs> and I really loved English. So, um, it's just the way that the, you write and it's, it's really interesting how, you know, you teach people, the English language when they're coming to America, you know? And I know they probably have a hard time getting the English language and they're gonna take time. But um, 
I know you really enjoyed teaching that too, like you said earlier. And we spoke about her photography. Her photography is wonderful. And um, if I can, um, what I like to do is I want to just show the audience. Is this the correct way? Yes. Okay. I just want to show this picture of, uh, hopefully if I can get it right, um, this picture of this drawing that she did. It's really, really beautiful. And uh, this is one of her paintings, photography. It's a painting. Painting, okay. Yeah, it's a photograph of the painting. No, this is weird. That can go actually any way that the person who likes it okay. like it to go. <laughs> okay. Okay. And this is a uh, another picture that she has. And could you tell? Our view is what the picture is actually what you did. It, it is a half of a chrysanthemum. Oh, okay. And Beautiful. so when um, I take flowers, um, sometimes I take them from far away and try to do some interesting things with color mm -hmm. um, on the computer. But that one was, just came up naturally on its own. Okay. And she does greeting cards. Yes, I was looking on the computer <laughs> last night. I'm like, greeting cards, huh? Oh, my gosh. Very, very talented lady. And one last one that I'm going to do, okay? So, um, get a feel to this card. What a very wonderful card. It's, um, hopefully you can see that. Very, very nice. And they're on her website? Yes. For so, no. I don't it know if you mentioned your website or not. My website is jillfreearts.com. And you will be able to see my work and a little bit about my history mm -hmm. and my gallery and yeah, no. fun stuff and community things that I've done as yeah. well. Yeah, let's talk about your gallery. Um, it's just on the website, or yeah, just... no, it's on the website. Mm -hmm. um, I have more things. I've done some more work, so I have to update it a little bit. But it's looking good, I think. Okay. Um, yeah. So, um, so, what other type of events do you go to? I know you, you're going to be doing stuff, but you do various things at the gallery. Um, this is the one on 509 Farmington Avenue, uh, Passages Gallery, yes. uh, which um, I want to mention. She's going to be there. And I want to mention um, the gentleman that she's going to be with, Eric Parad Paradigm. Paradigm. Eric Paradigm. And he's a wonderful man. And I was reading just a little bit about him. Now, um, he's a singer, songwriter too also. Yeah. And how did you meet him? Oh gosh, Hope Out Loud Coffee House. Where's that? I needed Hope Out Loud was at uh, La Paloma Sabanera. The, it was a little um, uh, coffee shop type place that was owned by Luis Cotto, who was one of our council people. Mm -hmm. And it was a wonderful place to go and hear live music and poetry slams and all kinds of things. But I met Eric there. Mm -hmm. he, I needed someone to back me up on a song and he kind of stepped in. Oh, wow. And it was an instinct like, wow, we're pretty good together. Oh, my goodness. And uh, he's been performing in the New England area for the last 10 years. Mm, wow. I think longer than that. Longer yeah, a long really? time. Long wow. Time. Oh, my goodness. And he's been nominated for the best solo performer by the Hartford Advocate, performing the club on Passons, um, best new faces show, and much, much more. Oh, my goodness gracious. So... He's also got a CD out too, also, mm -hmm. and um, actually, um, Jill will be performing with him. So, who's going to be? Um, you're just going to be singing. You're going to oh, let's do see, lots Mix, of fun things. Mixa Shan Razi, one of my very favorite saxophone players in on the planet. He's awesome. He's going to be sitting in because he's also my personal friend and neighbor. Okay. And um, Leslie Mansell mm -hmm. is going to be doing some numbers with us as well. Okay. And um, Abu, Alvin Carter Sr., might talk him into bringing a drum or two. Oh, okay, in. yes. He's been at Passages too also. And this is going to take place tonight, Saturday, May 30th. So if you're in the Hartford, Connecticut area, please come down. It starts from 6 to 9. Now, is there a fee or is just... There is. There is a cover charge. And I'm glad you mentioned that yes. because... Um, some of the take at the door is going to be donated to the Nepal uh, earthquake relief. Oh, great. And um, very sadly, one of my students is from Nepal, and his sister passed away in the earthquake. Oh, no. And their village was decimated. So the money will be going towards um, 
the Doctors Without Borders um, Nepal Earthquake Relief Fund. Okay. So, My cousin is out there. Really? I think she's working in some kind of uh, co-op thing or something. Wow. There. She's out in Nepal. And uh, my other cousin, he had went out there to help with the, he's also involved in a relief program. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And that's very wonderful. And and that's a good cause. Yeah. Yes. So we want you to all come out there and enjoy yourself. And uh, I would want to take a short break in a few minutes because I want to um, have her set up um, for her to sing a couple of songs later on. But we're going to get back to talking. And um, let's see. Now, when did you um, find out about Alvin Carter Sr.? How did you know him oh my, and his uh, son? This is a great, great story. <laughs> my kids are biracial. Okay. And I was at, and this is 30 years ago. And I was at Bushnell Park at one of the very early jazz festivals when oh, it was on the wonderful. east side of the park. And I was pushing my son Dylan on the swing. He was six months old. Oh, really? And I looked next to me and I see Joyce Bosco. Okay. And she is Alvin's wife. And they had a little girl, have a little, who's now a big girl, uh -huh. Serana, who was also six months old and is also um, of mixed racial okay. heritage and um, a beautiful young lady. But as babies, we were pushing them on the swings and they invited me over to their blanket. We started talking and we've been talking ever since. Oh, my so goodness. holidays we've spent together. Yeah, Abu is more like family and Joyce is my best bud. You know, she's my best. Oh, my goodness. That's <laughs> and so Alvin Jr. was a part of the mix with his family. And um, and actually, just silly, ironically, when I taught at Weaver High School in 1980, Alvin Jr. was a, um, who's a, a community person here and a wonderful percussionist in his own right, um, was a senior. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. Oh, my goodness. This is wonderful how you just meet people and everybody knows everybody yeah. in the Hartford area. Oh, Hartford's a small town. Yeah. <laughs> and our Alvin Carter Jr., I believe, has a wife and her name is... Sharice. Sh oh, yes, Sharice. Sharice Carter, who's wrote, an amazing singer. singer. Yes. She's awesome. Very and the sweetest so. person you ever want to meet. Yeah. She's terrific. And I saw, I just met his wife um, actually a couple of years ago, back when they were given a, a big entertainment, um, I think jazz and R&B um, thing over at the park at Sydney Park. And they mm -hmm. have a lot of people sing, a lot of bands there. Yeah, that's yeah. an annual thing that Alvin does, yes. Alvin Jr. And yes. um, yeah, it's obviously does great it time. again. Oh, well, that's fantastic. You know, the other thing too is he promotes young artists to come out and do yes. their thing. And so we have to, as oh, you know, older artists really bring the younger artists out. Of too. course, yeah. we have to show them the way. Right. And um, as you notice, those were some of the pictures in the intro that I took. Yes, I yeah, saw a picture from beautiful. going by. Yes, I, I that was with my camera, and I'm like, okay, let me do the snapshots. Anyway, yes, and it's so it's so interesting how there is a lot of talent in the Hartford area. Very, very interesting. And people are doing so many things. Well, I am a huge cheerleader, huge cheerleader for Hartford. Okay. I mean, between the library concert series and everything they're doing at the library, yes. the beautiful new building and all of that. Between that and the free jazz concerts and all of the yeah, venues yeah, we yeah. have with theater works and Passages Gallery and all yes. the different places. It's a great town. And I think the arts are so up and coming in Hartford. It's always been here, but I'm hoping now we can toot our horn and be there oh, okay. for the rest of the world. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll be right back. I'm gonna just take, we're gonna take a break and I'm gonna get her to set up to um, do a couple of songs and uh, we'll be right back. And what I, meanwhile, while we're setting up, I just wanted to ask you another question. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to AccessTV.org. I'm your host from Shape the Next Generation, Naima Jackson. Welcome to AccessTV.org. We're your hosts, Naima Jackson. And I'm Elijah Williams. Thank you for tuning in to Shape in the Next Generation. Today's special guest is Ms. Vicki Gallen Clark. Ms. Vicki will stop by on the show to talk about her role in the Blue Hill Civic Now, if you haven't heard about Blue Hill Civic Association, you should definitely look into it. It's located on Asylum. Now, if you don't know anything about Blue Hills, you should know that Blue Hill Civic Association, they will definitely help you get a step forward in your future. 
they'll help you figure out what you want to be in the future because they definitely helped me. I figured out what I want my career to be. I figured out what college I want to go to and I figured out what I want to major in. Blue Hills helped me because they helped me learn how to write a resume, a cover letter. They prepared me for an interview to get a job. Blue Hills Civic Association is definitely the perfect program for our youth today. Now, thank you for joining us on AccessTV.org. I like AccessTV.org because they offer us highlights on our local community that you don't get from Channel 3 or Fox News. They also have us gave us highlights from sports like track and field. So thank you so much for joining us. And all the youth out there, you should definitely join us at Access TV and definitely check out Blue Hill Civic Association because it will help you, it will motivate you to get out there, look into our programs and it will help you shape your future. As you know, I'm always doing something different. <laughs> And I do appreciate Steve for helping me out. <laughs> and uh, I'm back here with uh, singer for Social Change, Miss Jill Freeman. And uh, welcome back. And she's got a guitar already <laughs> and set to go. <laughs> so she'll be here. You know, I just want her to sing a couple of songs. And um, I would love to see everybody this evening over at Passages. So I'm going to hand it over to you, Jill. Go okay, for it. Okay, great. Um, First, I'm going to do um, Pack Up All Your Cares and Woes, just because it's fun and yes. easy, and, and I love it. Pack up all your cares and woes. Here I go, swinging low. You can help me, Pam. Bye, bye, blackbird. Do, 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 do. Where somebody waits for me. Sugar is sweet, and so is he. Bye. By my blackbird, no one here can love or understand me. Oh, what hard luck stories they all hand me. So make my bed and light the light. I'll be home late tonight, blackbird. Bye bye. That's cute. <laughs> that was a little ditty. And you know, yes. a part of my politics is also the personal aspect of living what you believe. So this is a fun song about taking charge and doing your own thing. That's right. Being happy. Yes. You always have to be happy. You know, mm -hmm. make yourself happy and do something or else you'd be crying and on the floor. But take it away, Jill. <laughs> okay. <laughs> song by um, Melvina Reynolds. Reynolds. It's called I Cannot Sleep. I cannot sleep thinking of the children who cannot sleep. Gone supperless to bed. I cannot sleep thinking of the young ones who roam the road, no place to lay their heads. If there were one, it would be cause to wonder. If there were one, it would be cause to weep. But they are numbered in too many millions. And for each one, I cannot sleep. I will not sleep. My sisters of the city, I will not sleep. My brothers of the plow, till we have shared the wealth we have created. And there is food for those who hunger now. If there were one, it would be cause to wonder. If there were one, it would be cause to weep. Can you take it out? But they are numbered in too many millions. And for each one, I will not sleep. 
thank you for joining me, Jill. Thank and uh, don't forget to join me next time. So remember, watch it, like it, and share it on. Make it happen. And stay excited. Do something new and do something different in your life. So thanks a lot, Jill. Thank oh you, my Tam. goodness gracious. My pleasure. Swing on the swings, go round and round and round. Then they all get up and start dancing like crazy, and we do gonna rock, gonna roll, 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 rock, gonna roll, gonna rock, gonna roll, rock, gonna roll, gonna rock, gonna roll, gonna rock the school tonight.